Hey, what's going on? This might be my last video I ever do on Sawnetta because, you know, only he he and his uh, uh, co-conspirators, they keep thinking that when they see one video on somebody, it's all about them. It's not about them. Uh, because obviously my channel, I think I got about 85 videos or something like that. Only about three or four are, are Sawnetta. I guess this will be the fifth. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, <clears throat> see, I notice when the heat is on these guys, what they do is they do the old school tricks. You know how uh, liars do. We all know a whole bunch of liars. What they do is um, if you say this is what you do, I know your game. You explain the game to them instead of saying, OK, yeah, you got me, even though sign that kind of says he, he you got him because he says. I'm collecting our money for the sign at the TV awards. Then when somebody calls him out on the money, then he says, don't tell me what to do with my money. See, so he's kind of indirectly telling you he's hustling right there, hustling you. It goes from it's, you, it's our money when he wants you to give up the money. But once he gets the money, it's his money. And you're damn right. He's going to get a bend. This is what they do. So what he does is now everybody such as myself, we're calling him agent. Uh, and I gave the details. A lot of people, uh, I admit some people do it out of spite, hate, and even like he says, uh, jealousy that they can't get or hustle the way he's been hustling, <laughs> you know, but I break it down why he's an agent and it has very little to do with the money. Uh, the money is just a bonus for him, but here's what he's done. He uh, starts accusing others of being agents to cover his ass. So, you you know, you can start thinking, oh, man, these others are agents, man. They're they're, uh, they're the problem. And you notice what he says. He says, if people who don't know about Sinet have come across videos like mine and a whole bunch of other people, they'll get the impression that Sinet is a hustler and a scam artist. Well, that's the right impression to get. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is, but... Um, so what he does is he makes videos saying we have agents in our midst, agents are destroying the, uh, community, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But the funny part is the so-called black conscious movement. You could do your own research that they're basically agents than themselves, the whole thing. Because they're not black consciousness, as I have explained to people before. They are free masons. And uh, Sarnetta keeps, see, that's the other thing he keeps tricking people on. Or try, or he only tricks the weak-minded. Because he's not that intelligent. He's slick, but he's not intelligent. Uh, he'll say, people keep thinking I'm a Freemason. But then, as you can see, the videos where I had the uh, discussion with him. He said, yeah, I'm a Freemason. We don't deal with the uh, white man's Freemasonry. Uh, but we know that's a joke. And that's a lie. Because all these people, they have comic book character names. Sa Netter, Egyptian style. I Empress Sekhmet. Shaka Akmos. Even though I don't think he seems to deal with them too much. But, all, you know, all these Egyptian names that these people, Natural Tahuti, Sutek. I mean, it is screaming to the white man, white man, we love you, white man, I submit to your Freemasonry, and to show that, here's my fake name, uh, under my assumed identity, I impress Sekhmet, come on. I mean, it's all, it, it, the Freemasonry is right in your face, but see, Freemasons can deny that they're Freemasons. Because, you know, then when they're back into a corner, then they tell you it's all about brotherhood. But what they don't tell you is that it's about brotherhood strictly for Freemasons. That, that's the brotherhood. <laughs> but the bottom line is, if you're a black Freemason, you are under the command and guidance of the white man. Because he controls the Freemasonry. So anytime black people say, oh, man... We don't deal with the white man Freemasonry. Okay, then why are you dealing with any Freemasonry? 
Okay? Because the white man controls the Freemasonry. And again, I always say, if you're into this Egyptian shit, go to Egypt, go to Sudan, and preach to them about their heritage. But you won't do that, of course. Because that's not what they're interested in. It's just like Marcus Garvey. They're not really, truly interested in dealing with the African. If you notice with the Pan-African stuff and false Pan-African stuff, you notice how they always leave the African out of the out of the mix. You, if you notice that, <laughs> I mean, how are you gonna be a Pan Africanist and then leave the African out? Africans are not even Pan Africanists. And then you have people like Tariq Nashi going to, I believe, it was Zimbabwe. What, what's he talking about? I'm going to Zimbabwe. I'm going to this country, and then shows videos like if. Oh, Tariq Nasheed is in Zimbabwe today, so now he's here to save the day. He's saving the world. Come on. It's just another hustle, and I guarantee you it's in preparation for a documentary on Robert Mugabe or something, even though there's a whole ton of them on uh, YouTube. A documentary on Zimbabwe, which he'll start collecting funds for. You should get his routine by now. So... The Freemasons, see, these are ghetto Freemasons. If you notice what Sarnet has been saying, he's been saying, oh, in prison, that's where they turn turn the people out. See, because he was in prison. He got turned out. Zaza Ali. Anybody, all these people you name, that's out here. They were in prison. Young Pharaoh. Yeah, I called him out. You see what he's on. He might be trying to act like he's opposition. He's He is entertaining. But, um... He acts like he's opposition, but they're all in the same camp. I mean, his name alone, Young Pharaoh, lets you know it's in the same vein as uh, this this stuff. And and you know the I, like I keep telling you, man, it's prison. These coon agents, they get turned out in prison. Once you get that prison record, your options to do anything have shrunk now. You can't really do much. That's why they hustle on the street. And that's why they do the hustle on YouTube. Which, I, again, is fine if you're actually doing something for the people with the money. But since the only thing you're doing is overspending on automobiles and buying a whole bunch of stuff that you really don't need. Number one, you don't know how to manage money. That's number one. He apparently knows how to hustle the money, but he doesn't know how to manage it. Because, again, you can, I mean, if you can't shine in the ghetto with an E-Class Mercedes Benz, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say, man. What the hell you need an S-Class for? I mean, not an executive, man. See, now you got to keep up the payments. He claims he paid for it in full, but he lies. He didn't pay for that shit in full. Uh, that's why he got that shit used, because if he had enough money to pay for that shit in full, he would have gotten a brand new one. Right? So... You know, it's all Freemason uh, hustle. That's why they have their built-in Freemason audience slash fan base. Those are the majority of the viewers for the views that are real. And those are the majority of the people donating because that's a part of the brotherhood. Support whoever you're told to support. That's in the uh, craft, in the movement. But again, the movement, the movement is for, is to benefit white people. Not black people, because I always ask the black Freemasons, I say, well, can you explain to us why white Freemasons are racist against black people? And they always put black people out there as the prime target of uh, hatred. They have no answers. Because obviously people don't want to stop what they're doing because they figure, OK, well, this is the best thing going for me right now. But even if the white man hates the black people. You know, what can I do? But see, don't you find it interesting that these Freemasons, they always come out with the race thing. But like I said, the connection is there because these people are not black Americans. That's another, that's a key thing. I'm not just, people think I'm picking on Caribbeans and even Africans just to pick on them or because I don't like them. That's not what it is, man. I'm noticing the pattern. These people are not black Americans, but they 
are speaking on our behalf as if they are us. They're trying to speak for us. They're not us. We need the black Americans to speak for us. So this is what I've noticed so far. And this is in general. There are always exceptions to every rule. A lot of the black leaders that come out of the black church, not to say that they're not Freemasons either, but they're usually black Americans. The ones in the conscious community, so-called conscious community, are usually Caribbeans or coming from some other place, if you noticed. And Caribbeans, like any other foreigner, they don't have a vested interest in supporting black America. They're looking out for their own uh, countrymen. And Jamaicans are a prime example of people who are looking out for their own countrymen, primarily. Now, the more obscure Caribbean islands, you know, they have to kind of attach themselves to some other uh, Caribbean islands. So, Dominica, you know, people, you know, that's not really a well-known place and a whole bunch of other tiny places that aren't well-known. And, of course, in that mix with the... Uh, Caribbean, you have British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, Aruba, islands that are still occupied by colonial forces. And like I say, you got all this British stuff going around. So it's not unlikely that the British would have used the Marcus Garvey or other black people to try and influence black people. To usurp the United States like what's going on right now with all this British stuff. I went to a Walmart the other day, went to the self-checkout line. The damn computer was speaking to me in a British accent. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Yeah, man, I mean, this is this is going too far. You got that, what's his name? James Groden, that fat guy who they think is funny. All, he, all I ever see of him is a fat man dancing and smiling and shit. I'm like, man, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is funny about that, but... He has a TV show in the United States and he's hosting the fucking Grammys. Not that I watch the Grammys because the music is really horrible these days, man. They need to get back to actual live musicians that create music not, and get off the of the computer. That's the only way you can have true free expression in the music is the, the traditional way, which is musicians. But, um... So that's what this is all about, man. These guys, these are uh, coon agents of the white man. And they're trying to be slick. Like I told you before, there's a Elaine Brown of the Black Panthers. She was told that if anybody suspected that you were an agent, call them out as an agent to deflect. Now, she was told this. Who told her this? The white man, the FBI, just like... And uh, other coon agents. And Sionetta had the nerve to show the popular video of the coon agent who, with the chipped tooth who uh, took down the Black Panthers. He tried to say, I'm down with Gail Noble. And he met the man. The man came down one time and he looked like he didn't even want to stay long. And Sionetta had the nerve to try and act like he wanted to take over the show. Like Channel 7 would hire somebody like Sionetta. What we is going to do now, people? Uh, is we our own best enemy? Uh, <laughs> Channel 7 is a professional station, man. They ain't gonna allow nobody talking like that on there. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Uh, but, here, see, here's the thing. The agents are trained by the white man. They go deep cover. They change their lives. See, once you, see I'm into the JFK assassination. That's why... I learned about the CIA. I learned about the FBI tactics and what they do. This is why I know who is full of shit and who is not. Because I actually get deep into the shit. You're talking to a man who goes, went to the National Archives to investigate shit. That's firsthand information. That's better than going to a library. I had an interest in the JFK assassination. I flew to Dallas, Texas. Stayed for two weeks. I didn't go sightseeing Dallas. I went checking out the JFK uh, assassination uh, sites. Not just where he got killed, but where Oswald lived at, all the places he lived at, where Jack Ruby lived at, Oswald's post office, the uh, Dallas newspaper, where Jack Ruby was supposed to have been at during the assassination the theater, every damn thing. 
in, in the last place that JFK was supposed to have spoken at before he got killed. Just to see the proximity of all these places and to see how everything is connected. And there's no doubt that it was a conspiracy. There's no doubt about that. You know, I was almost totally there, which is what made me spend the money to go to Dallas in the first place. But once I went there, there was no doubt in my mind after I saw everything. No doubt. I mean, you got to understand agents like Oswald, what they do, he moved quite a few times. See, the, the cover is that he was poor. See, you, you can't use the financial status of an agent to know if they're agent. Agents can be rich. Agents can be poor. Agents can be middle class. Shit, some agents they might have is homeless. All that, it has to be good cover. That's what it's all about. Good cover. Your neighbor that just moved in might be a dormant agent looking to uh, a sleeper cell agent looking to uh, be activated at some time. That's what they have to do. They have to get involved in the community. Some just get there, get seen. Some don't talk to people. Others want to talk to people and get known. It, and, they, and keep in mind, it's not just one they might send to, send into a neighborhood or for one event. It could be a few different people, agents, and they may not know of each other. And each one might have a different task. Each one will have a different task. Each one will be of a different type, different uh, uh, lifestyle that they're living. One might even, they might even say, hey, I'm a recovering uh, drug addict. And that agent could really be a recovering drug addict, but now he's recruited as an agent. Or he, he may not have been a drug addict. They get females. They get fake families like uh, Newtown, Connecticut. Fake families. Hell, and a lot of times even fake people. This is, uh, it's unfortunate that this thing is, is occurring, but, you know, you can't really even say that it's unlike anything you've seen in ancient times either because... Whenever people take over countries, the rulers are now paranoid of the people because the people outnumber the, pe the, the, the government, the rulers. Probably like a thousand to one. So they're extremely paranoid. In every country, there are people, including this one, including Canada, including the UK, every country on earth. There are people or groups in the country who don't like the government. And they want to see it fall. They're, just like in ancient Egypt. There were people who didn't like the ways of the ancient Egyptians. No matter how sound it was to, to many. So they went to Canaan. Went to Phoenicia. Became Hebrews and all that kind of stuff. And did their own thing. So this is how things work. I mean ancient Libyans. They didn't like the Egyptians. They didn't like their ways. But you saw once they took over Egypt. They kind of. <laughs> Use Egyptian ways. So, so it could be jealousy. It could just be hatred. But most countries, governments in the world are invading forces that came from someplace else. That's another thing people have to realize. So this is why people want to maintain and watch over people because the, the rulers are paranoid. And this is why they put these agents in there. Because once you withhold the money and then you pass money on. See, this is the thing with the CIA in particular. They would suitcase a lot of money, briefcase it, brown paper bag it to a lot of people for payoffs because the CIA, they have so much money at their disposal because, like I said, they're run by the corporations uh, and the corporations are run by the banks and you know who runs the banks. That's why the buck stops at the bank owners. Uh, so giving somebody money, feeding people stipends, that's. Not a problem. And for black agents, as you saw with that episode with Sayonetta, he said that the dark-skinned guy with the uh, goatee who led uh, Fred Hampton to his death, he got a bonus of $300, which may have been probably around $2,000 back, back in those days. So, see, for black people, it doesn't take much to, to, to turn them into coon agents. And then that guy, he had the nerve to say... That he didn't know his information was going to lead to that. And he regrets that. The man knew he was a coon agent. 
He knew what the fuck he was doing. He knew he was spying and reporting back to the white man. So you can't hand me that shit and say that he didn't know what his information was going to lead to. He knew the shit was going to lead to something not good for Fred Hampton and his crew. That's what the fuck he definitely knew. So you can't say he didn't know that. He knew he was getting paid to be a coon agent. So that's why you can't believe what they have to say. And uh, again, these black power groups, black conscious groups, how come these coon agents still walk the streets? I mean, these are the worst people amongst black people. Farrakhan's a coon agent. I keep saying I'm going to, I got I to gotta, uh, write, I got to do the outline and write that shit up on him. I got to do it before he dies, man, because I don't want people to think <laughs> I'm doing it to him like that. But uh, I keep saying that I got to do it. Um, so side out of all these guys, you know, like I said, prison is a prime breeding ground for uh, coon agents. Drug rehab, too. But prison drug rehab usually goes hand in hand. Again, you got to understand the CIA, the way they operate. And the FBI learns from the CIA. They explore everybody's weaknesses. And then they'll give you what you want. Or they'll threaten to expose whatever it is they're going to exploit it. Whether you're a homo, whether you're a drug addict, whether you just like white women and you don't want nobody to know, whether you like little kids, you don't want nobody to know, whether you're a materialistic, uh, whatever it is that your weakness is that uh, makes you stop using logic and you say, I got to have this because this is my weakness. You know, <clears throat> Like Baird Rustin, his weakness was obviously fucking little boys and being a homo. But they needed to use him well because, you know, it's a different agenda with that. But see, when back in the days, that they were easier to blackmail because obviously people didn't want to be known as a homo. And, and let alone a pedophile. See, they keep going off on R. Kelly, but... Yeah, we saw the tapes, but these others are far worse even though we don't know the extent of what R. Kelly is, is doing, but you see how people attack R. Kelly. So this brings me to the episode side that did when he brought on that coon agent, Khalil Amani. And I, I asked the guy for an interview, but the man didn't get back to me because one thing I noticed about the interview, <laughs> side in typical agent fashion, said no insults to the man. Ask one question. He was very protective of the guy. I'm like, if this guy is supposed to be an enemy of black people, coon agent, why are you uh, being very protective? And he always called the man brother. At all times, I listened to the entire broadcast show propaganda. He always kept on calling him brother. I'm like, man, if this doesn't tell you these two are coon agents together, I don't know what will. Keep in mind, when I ask Sonetta questions or anybody else asks them or disagrees with Sonetta, we go from being called brother to being niggas. Right off. So, see, this is what I mean. This is why I evaluate and decipher, decipher and figure out where these people's minds are at. The people who criticize me for criticizing them, they don't think like I think. Because they don't go to the fine details until there's nothing left. In this case, I go until there's nothing left. And I noticed that the man kept calling the man brother at all times, which tells me a whole lot. And of course, this Khalil Amani comes with this fake name, of course, changing the name. Another another key thing for Kuhn agents. They try to make it sound some Islamic uh, high spiritual type shit. It's always those type of names to try and trick black people into thinking that they're positive. Now, this guy, he said he was proud to do what he did. Walked into the FBI office himself and said, I want to volunteer, white man. But he wouldn't even really answer too many questions. Sometimes he'd be just succinct and say, yeah, that's it. Move on. But see... If people get under the scrutiny of Alquan and my, my questioning, 
then I'll reveal a whole lot. But so far, these these people don't want to appear. I'm gonna try and get Ben X on the on the on the show. I'm not gonna go to do the TRS anymore until I get a guest. And um, once I do that, I'll go back on. But I want this Ben X and this Khalil Amani. These are guys I want. Uh, Cause once they they get questioned by me, a whole lot will be revealed. So he kept defending these uh, this this guy uh, Amani. He would ask him a few questions here and there to try and make it look like uh, he didn't like what this guy did, but overall he was down with him. And this Kamani said he's a gay activist. The political topic of the day. So that lets you know right there what he's all about. Why would he have to say he's a gay activist? And he claims he's not gay. Why would you be a gay activist in a nigga and say gays don't have the rights uh, that others have and they suffer just as much as black people? See, niggas like that need to be slapped to begin with. I don't want to get into that. I'll say this. If you're not a crack fiend, you're not going to become a pro crack activist. If you don't smoke weed, you're not really going to give a damn whether or not weed is legal or not. I don't smoke weed. I can give a damn if it's legal or not. I don't use crack. I don't care about that. So I'm not gay. I don't give a damn about gay rights. Gays have the rights to the fuck each other in the ass. That's, I mean, that's what they do. Nobody's stopping them from doing it. But if you're supposedly straight and you're supporting gay rights, phew, the man said he was the stripper. You can look at the man and see something's not right. So, and why Side Netta chose this guy, I don't know, but he gave us a sneak preview of the guy before. I think it was a couple of days before the interview. And like I tell you, him, Tariq Nasheed, they always use the brainwashing tactics that the white man told them to, to uh, use, which is to plant a seed and then come back to it and then act like it's some new, newly discovered uh, stuff for them. When it was already in their mind, just like the interview with the Haitian girl with the afro, uh, talking about the dark skin and the hair. He didn't just find this girl, the story he told, oh, I just saw the girl on the side. And I had to go talk to her. That's bullshit. These people are Freemasons, they're being uh, tested to see if they have any type of uh, effective uh, effectiveness on the people. Black Americans in particular, in particular. And again, the girl just happened to be Haitian. A Caribbean. Man, if you're not putting the pieces together by now. See, that's the thing. You can't fool me. I, t I keep telling people I grew up in a household full of liars. Everyone was a liar. They lied together against me. They lied to each other. <laughs> I mean, I know the tactics. So this is why I'm always skeptical. And this is why I keep finding everything until I break it down to the last compound. The, the girl just happened to be Haitian. Everybody, practically everybody who's given a spotlight on Sarnetta, whether it's George Macon or whoever, these guys are not people that just happen to be walking down the damn street. These are people who, who are up next. That's, that's who they are. This Freemason comic book character recycling to see who, who can do what. And if you can't influence the people, the people don't want to hear from you, then you get dropped. Not from Freemasonry, just from this uh, little test. Uh, and then they try to bring in more people. So that's all set up. The gay thing is set up. I mean, the other thing this sign that it does, first, he screens his calls as far as numbers. He see a true agent. He wants your number. See, when I call blocked, he said, I'll, I'll take it because I'm I want to entertain so-called coons. But then after people started calling with their uh, block numbers and then he's like, "Nah, I'm not picking up numbers that's, that's blocked. That's what he used to do all the time because he wants your rec your number. Remember when I call, he gave out a number. 
And then a show after that, he said, if you call block, that don't mean the FBI can't trace your number and find out where you're at. Why would he say that? Why do you want to know where people are at, man? What, what, where people are at? That doesn't make any damn sense. Unless you're a coon agent. And before, when he used to have Google Hangouts, he used to say, no, you can't get on unless you show your face. Be a man. Show your face. You know, they use all the bullying tactics that they think is going to be effective to make somebody say, oh, yeah, I don't want this guy calling me names. So, yeah, I guess I'll show my face. You have to be an idiot to show your face and give your name to Sarnetta. Don't give your fate. Don't give your name. Don't give your uh, email. Private email, anyways. <clears throat> don't give your number to this guy. You think you're getting close to him because he's available. He's available because he's keeping a catalog on people who are for real. And giving it to the white man. That's his fucking job. I mean, there's no other reason he would want your number. There's no other reason he would want to see your face. You know, this is what agents do. They have to, they, he's collecting a database. This is what you do when you go on Facebook all the damn time and say, hey, this is what I did today. And this is where I'm about to go. How many times have you heard about people getting burglarized because they say, hey, I'm on my way to the game. Then your buddies look, they're like, oh, okay. We know the game's going to be at least three hours. Another hour or so in, in, in driving time, depending on where you're at. Uh, we got enough to go hit this place. And um, that's what people do. That's what they use Facebook for. Because you're volunteering information to the powers that be. To keep a digital Rolodex on you. They know that if people are for real, see, the thing is that the, the white man is basically trying to stop people, black people from living a normal life. You know, yeah, there are black people out here who say we want to separate from the system and we want to go to Africa and all this, these, these lofty bullshit dreams. I mean, nobody's stopping anybody from going to Africa. You can just pick up a, a, a plane ticket and go to Africa. But these people who claim to want to go to Africa, they're not going there and staying there. You don't have to wait for somebody else. Why you got to talk somebody else into it? I mean, you you go. Shit, if there's something out, if you want to go have sex with a woman, you're not going to talk somebody else into uh, doing it first. Unless you don't feel that you can get it. <laughs> you go out, you, you're the one making sure you're not telling anybody you're going out there on your own. So that's what these people should do when dealing with this Africa stuff. So this is what they do with these agents, man. They're trying to uh, get them to expose the real so they can keep a, a catalog on these people and uh, see what they're up to. And the same thing with a lot of these fake stunts with that Micah X. You know, that was all bullshit. I'm sorry. A lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people do see it. But that was BS. Uh, you gotta ask yourselves, man. You you coon agents. See, coon agents they still live their lives. That's why, and that's another thing. Sonetta said. He, he, that's how you know he was listening to my video, because I always said, and you can see some of the comments. I always said that coon agents fear the white man more than they fear black people. They don't respect black people at all. That's why it's easy for them to sell out because they figure the white man is in control. He knows what's up. Black people ain't going to do shit. But see, if the, the coon agent started disappearing on a regular basis after it's been known that they were cooning out, I'll bet you they'll pay attention to black people then and respect black people. But unfortunately, too many black people... Man, they just fall for the tricks. I know a lot of the black people that call sign in and say, we love you. You're doing this. You're doing that. Even when he told the people, I do what I want with my money. Then you still had Negroes saying, yeah, that's right. It's his money. I'm like, either if those weren't fellow Freemasons uh, hyping it up, if those were real people saying that kind of thing, then now you see why his hustle is successful. 
Because, I mean, the black people can't be that stupid. I mean, <laughs> I hope black people are not that dumb. But, again, I think part of it is the New York mystique that a lot of people from around the country have. They're like, man, I call so and then I can be a part of New York. You hear how a lot of them say, yeah, I'm going to go out to New York and um, become a, go on vacation. So I think that's a part of it, you know. And like I say, man, you go around Times Square, tourist areas, you see the, I mean, you can see that in any place that has uh, tourism, whether it's a Niagara Falls or Philly, Boston, D.C., L.A. Uh, you know, there's always some uh, trinkets or tourist uh, mugs and st stuff like that. People buy those. Because, you know, they're happy to be wherever the hell they're at, you know? So this is why people do what they do. You know, they, they'll buy and accept what the sign that is and these other hustlers are uh, doing. And like I said, man, I understand you got to grind and all that kind of stuff, especially when you go out, get out of prison. And I prefer people to be kicking knowledge than to be shooting each other. But these guys are not genuine. That's the problem. These guys are coon agents. And um, another example, let me see how long this is going. All right, that's good time. Uh, another example of uh, collaborators in the black media. If you notice, a lot of people knew that these guys were out for hits, YouTube views, AdSense money. To supplement their income. A lot of people knew that from the beginning. And you know that because they say, yeah, we the best uh, in the black media. Make sure you uh, subscribe and, and hit the like button. I, I keep telling you that's how you know it's all about money and entertainment with these people. When they say subscribe, hit the like button. I don't tell you to subscribe. I don't tell you to hit the like button. You hit it if you want to. That's why the people I talk about they make sure that they hit the dislike button because they think that that's hurting me. But see, I'm not telling you to hit the like button in the first place. If you like it, you hit it. If you don't, you don't. You know, <laughs> that's the way I do it on YouTube. Uh, but some of them, they got to hit the dislike button because they don't like the message. But you can't deny that it's uh, the, not, the, not the truth. So again, in the black, they used when they first started coming out because we used to talk on the TRS show. Solomon used to call in. Old guy would call in every now and then, and we saw eye to eye. But see, these are a prime example of uh, other phonies. This is why I always ask people questions, and I listen clearly to their answers and what they're all about. And. Uh, Sometimes they can sound good. Sometimes they sound a little vague. And when they start sounding a little vague or somebody takes the time to interrupt and doesn't allow them to fully answer, then I start wondering, uh, okay, where are they really going with this? So, oh God, Solomon, they started off trying to act like they were exposed in Sarnetta, just like the young Pharaoh, just like... Uh, Kevin Gill, just like Haven Bullets, all these people. You know, it's the same routine, man. You got to stop falling for it. They act like they're enemies, but they're really collaborators. Poppy, too. They're all getting their numbers up. Because if you notice, Sarnetta keeps playing videos. Or he says, this is who did it. Go to their page and put a thumbs down. Or, or he'll tell you, go to their page and subscribe. He's trying to get the numbers up. Getting their hits up so they can get ads since money. You notice he hasn't played my videos and hasn't mentioned me, even though some guy called in and told him about me. But he doesn't want to play my shit back because my shit is real. And then he doesn't want that kind of shit out. That's why he kept muting me. But when it's staged and orchestrated, he'll keep on keeping the beast up. Because you notice when Solar Mind and Oh God didn't uh, say anything about 
sign that anymore. He would keep bringing their names up and playing them back and having discussions. You know, it's a back and forth thing. And then they got their hits up. Then they diss Renee because it's about money. And Solomon only likes light skinned women because he's cooned out. Uh, and he defends Umar Johnson because he's trying to roll. Number one, he's from Philly, too. And he's trying to roll with whatever is popular. See, these are the kind of people I don't respect. Don't go with what's popular. Go with what's right. Um, the old guy got exposed for messing with a Puerto Rican. You know, it is what it is. And then uh, saw that try to say Puerto Ricans aren't black, but yet he's a goddamn Dominican. I mean, you talk about, see, too many lies. It's all about entertainment. I know you got to keep people entertained on YouTube. But, see, I don't know why these people, I, matter of fact, this is going to convince me to put the China Fox up now. <laughs> but I don't know why these people on YouTube keep choosing black power, as they say, or black uh, themes, black justice as, as their way of uh, getting hits. I don't know who told them that's the way to do it. Because <clears throat> there are other ways you can go uh, on YouTube and get, gain a, a big audience without going with the black angle. But this is what they do. And then obviously after they get to a certain level, they move away. Which brings me back to the old God. Apparently old God and Solomon went their own ways and Sol uh, old God went and started some hip hop channel. Last I checked, he had 176,000 subs, which I think that's way too many. I think he must have bought some of them and he used, uses clips from other people's channels. So if the subs are real, I guess he's making some kind of money out of it, I guess. Um, and that's his bottom line. That's what he wanted to do. But see, if that's what you wanted to do, that's all you got to do in the first place. But they want the controversy. They want the uh, the mayhem. And they start the BS. And uh, these are agents. These are cool agents. These are uh, pranksters. These are people who are not real. This is why you have to stop following these guys. Stick with somebody who's real. I mean, if you want pure entertainment under the guise of realism... Fuck with them. If you want something real, mess with me. Mess with, I'll even say Seti. Like I told Sayonetta, out of all the, the characters that uh, were associated with you, Seti seems to be the only one who was real. Now, he may be over the top for a lot of people, but as far as his angle and his motives are concerned, they seem more genuine than any house of consciousness person or, or, or affiliated person. Even though I still hold out with SETI because he's associated with that Ashvar uh, Quasi and, they, and the irritated genie. They come out of the same camp. Quasi comes out of the Dr. Ben camp. Dr. Ben was a free ma mason. And the genie and SETI were beefing with each other at at, at one time, talking about who uses the language, who uses uh, the good language, which is clear that the irritated genie is going after one demographic of blacks. Said he's going after the, I guess, ghetto five blacks that don't want to learn. And that's clearly a part of their mission. And said he is not concerned about Nation of Islam. The irritated genie is. So. But I like them both though. That's the funny part. <clears throat> uh, I'll keep listening to them. To see if uh, somebody. Gives me some more clues. <laughs> That's another thing. People think when I ask people questions. I'm, wait, I'm trying to trick people. Into giving the wrong answers. See you can only be tricked. If you're lying. <laughs> if you're not lying you can't be tricked that's why nobody's been able to trick me at all they keep trying but you can't trick me because I'm not lying uh, so that's why they have to over talk and gang up but it still doesn't work so 
Again, I stated my case that these are coon agents. I don't make the video about are they real or are they agents if I have not analyzed the facts and came to the proper conclusion. You never know. You might see a video asking are they real or are they agents and they may not be one. Matter of fact, I made one on the irritated genie and the end result is inconclusive. So <laughs> not everybody is a clear cut agent, even though I say I'm leaning toward agent with the irritated genie because after all, he was a government agent. You know, <laughs> you can't deny that. But there's government agents and there's coon agents. So what we'll do is we'll close this one out, but I think everybody gets the picture. And I think don't fall for uh, in the black. Don't fall for Sarnetta. Sarnetter. <laughs> and uh, his interviewing agents and talking about agents and people trying to destroy him or agents because he's the agent. And I love to see about the Sarnetter TV awards. I like to see if the man is going to pay employees because if you're paying people and you're renting a venue, that means you got to pay the IRS. And since it's a venue, I noticed he doesn't say the Apollo anymore either. I noticed that because Reggie was trying to say the Apollo. So I never shut that down real quick. So he's collecting all his money. He said he was renting the Apollo and it costs a lot of money to rent the Apollo. That's what he said. So in the, at the end of the day, he's not going to do it at the Apollo. So apparently he's not communicating with Reggie on the scam. Either that or Reggie's a goddamn idiot. I mean, it's one of the two. <laughs> so, uh, he, he's not renting the Apollo out, apparently. So, if he doesn't hold it at the Apollo, that means he has conned the people. Because you, he said it was going to be at the Apollo, it was going to cost X amount of dollars. He's going to hold it at the usual spot that he used to, used to hold his uh, debates at. And it'll save him a whole lot of money versus the Apollo. The Apollo obviously is more high profile and he claims he had a Coca-Cola sponsor, but then he asked for uh, other people to sponsor the event. I think he's lying about the Coca-Cola sponsor because Coke, while they do sponsor a lot of events and you can go on their website and you can see that they will sponsor you. A lot of, uh, corporations do that they don't do it because they love you of course you know and they, they don't want to give back to the community that's not the reason why they sponsor they sponsor because it's advertising and it makes them look like they're caring you know and it's a small amount of money to advertise but if he had coke coke i don't think they would uh sponsor something like this <laughs> And especially, here's the key thing. These corporations sponsor you when you have a 501c3. That's when you get sponsored. They won't really fuck with you outside of that. Because they want that filed in with the government. So, they're not going to sponsor you without that. Take that to the bank. So, this is how you can tell when these people are lying. I mean, you people got the internet. Let your fingers do the talking. Don't listen to Sarnetta because he's a hustler and a liar. So he kept on cutting off Reggie. He even dismissed the guy, but the guy keeps coming back. Me ain't going to play music while I'm talking. And you're supposed to be my boy? Hell, hell no. <laughs> but I guess uh, Sarnetta is realizing Reggie is the idiot. He might be fucking up my hustle. So I got to stop uh, telling this guy everything. But goes to show, see, when he said it was going to be at the Apollo, and Reggie said that the Apollo fits around 1500, Sarnetta got in real quick. No, no, don't say that. Don't say, it's, it's, don't talk about the Apollo. <laughs> because he already talked about the Apollo already, so it's too late. You can't take it back. 
you started collecting funds by telling people it's going to be at the Apollo. So it better be at the Apollo. And if you can't get it at the Apollo, it at least better be in Manhattan. You know, can't be no place else. Can't be in Brooklyn or nowhere like that because that's not the same thing. No diss to Brooklyn, but you know what I'm trying to say. So, but you collected the funds under the premise that it will, it will be at the Apollo Theater because that's supposed to mean something. Remember, the one in Atlanta, I don't know where the hell that was at. And, you know, I'm not familiar with Atlanta like that. But I guess it was at one of their premier uh, venues. So he wanted to counter it and say, not only is it going to be here in New York, it's going to be at the Apollo. Very well-known theater. So it's going to be bigger than the Atlanta one. But again, this whole saw another TV awards thing, this was pre-planned too. He planted the seeds on that, trying to say, yeah, maybe I should do that. The man, like Tariq Nasheed and other hustle, hustlers and con men on YouTube, they plan everything well in advance. Okay, I asked the people for money in this way. I got it on this one. I didn't get it on this one. So I got to keep coming up. That's why they keep coming up with schemes. It's all about the money. They want the continued cash flow. You shouldn't give these people a dime unless they do something for the people with the money. Why do they have to keep collecting money if they don't do anything with it? I mean, Sarnetta, see, he fucked up, unlike Tariq Nasheed. See, Tariq Nasheed is slicker, but he's also smarter than Sarnetta. Tariq Nasheed doesn't tell you he's collecting funds for the people. See, Sarnetta said he's collecting for the people. It's our money. That's what Sarnetta said. That's why I always ask Sarnetta, let me get a ride in the people's bins. Since it's the people's money that paid for the pe people's bins. But Tariq Nasheed, on the other hand, he says, I need some funds for this documentary. I need funds for these backpacks. Funds for water uh, filters. That's what he says. That's how slick he is. But what he doesn't say, he makes sure not to say this because people probably wouldn't donate. He don't want people to wise up. That's why they constantly block people from their channels if you say something that goes against their hustle. I'm blocked on Tariq Nasheed. I'm blocked on Sarnetta. I'm blocked on Umar Johnson. I'm, I'm blocked on all these people because I just expose their hustle game. They don't like it. See, Tariq Nashi, he made sure to say, I need money for this documentary. It's going to be big. It's going to be spectacular. I mean, and we're going to let the people know the truth. White supremacists, they don't they want to shut this down. So we need you to, to make this happen. But what he leaves out is. I want this documentary to be made. And if we sell X amount of dollars, then I'll make this amount of uh, money off of it. And my bank account will grow fatter. <laughs> See, that's what he doesn't tell you. He, he leaves that part off. Because if that's the end game, which it is, then you'll be like, damn, what the fuck? Why would I keep giving him money so he can live it up? Why don't I do it? And others say, well, Tariq actually produces a product. I said that before. And Tariq stole that from me because he realized damn, that's a good idea but I give him the credit because he does produce something but like I said from what he gets in he damn sure doesn't spend all the money on it and he keeps all the profit if you see his DVDs I mean the man can't even give you a Blu-ray and we're on 4K now <laughs> he can't give you a Blu-ray but he wants to give you a DVD selling it I see the prices fluctuate from that eighteen oh four on Amazon from twenty nine ninety nine to twenty one ninety nine. That's a hell of a lot for a DVD, even at twenty one ninety nine. You can get a four K Blu Ray for twenty one ninety nine, and it'll include a regular Blu Ray disc, 
With Tariq Nasheed, you're paying $21.99 to $29.99. And you're not even getting one Blu-ray disc. You're getting a cheap-ass DVD. Old-school technology. A DVD. We're in 2018, man. DVDs came out in 1997. Some of some of the people listening weren't even born. 1997. <laughs> I'm just saying you got to think about it. That's the hustle. Sonetta's hustle is uh, trying to trick you into believing that he's not a coon agent. So he brings another agent on <laughs> to kind of deflect attention away from his, his being an agent. So Sonetta, you should see this one. I know your game. I've exposed your game. So you can keep on doing it as long as you got a fool, of course. But I'll keep I'll keep exposing it. But you know, the truth be told, you can uh, have a little bit of a sigh of relief because I'm not really planning on doing any more videos about you because that's not my main mission. I just had to point this out because I thought you were trying to be ultra slick, and some people may not catch it, but I did. <laughs> 